Making the perfect miso soup is deceptively simple. To truly master this staple of Japanese home cooking, it's all about balancing that rich umami taste with subtle smokiness in that classic Japanese stock called dashi. When you're new to Japanese cuisine, it's so tempting to reach for a box of ready-to-go granulated dashi. And I admit, I've used it for years and in many recipes on this channel, but just one time making it from scratch, I realized I could never go back. With this simple method, you will have the perfect base for soups, hot pots, simmer dishes, and more. So what is dashi anyway? Dashi itself is just two ingredients. Kombu, dried kelp. This brings the umami. It's actually what MSG was originally synthesized from. And katsobushi flakes. It's dried skipjack tuna that's been shaved thinly. They are soft and feathery, but bring a deep smokiness to the dashi. You may have seen these dancing on okonomiyaki. That's all you need to get your dashi started, these two ingredients. Oh, and water, of course. So let's fill a small pot with about 800 milliliters of water. Bring that over to your stove and turn on the heat. First ingredient in is the kombu. It's a little long for this pot, so I'll use some kitchen shears to cut in half. Add those directly into the water. If you have time, you could soak the kombu for one to two hours before cooking to get the maximum flavor out of the seaweed. But no worries, if you skip this step, it'll still work. Toss in the katsobushi. This is about 25 grams or just under an ounce. Side note, many recipes will simmer the kombu first separately, remove and then add in the katsobushi to just steep. But honestly, simmering at the same time like this saves time and it still tastes great. Let that simmer on medium low for about 20 minutes. Now that we have our dashi going, let's get a few seasonal ingredients ready to go in our soup. Give your greens a wash. I went with komatsuna, which is a type of mustard green, similar to spinach, but with a more piney flavor. Cut the stems and leaves into long, even strips. The stems have a ton of flavor. We'll add these early in the soup and add the leaves later on. Next, enoki mushrooms, which I love. They're fun to look at and have a nice texture. Just cut off the end and also cut into even strips. Instead of enoki, feel free to use shiitake mushrooms, shimeji, maitake, regular button mushrooms, or even portobello might be nice. And instead of plain old tofu, let's use some atsuage, which is tofu that's been fried. Cut in half lengthwise, then cut into even cubes, not too big, as they'll puff up when cooked. That's all we need for our miso soup. I would recommend to sticking to three ingredients to keep it simple. Feel free to mix and match with what's available to you, or what you like. Let's get back to the dashi. The kombu has rehydrated and become a vibrant green. And the katsuobushi has kind of become a mess, but there's no helping that. So it's time to remove everything with a fine mesh spider. Alternatively, you could strain this with a cheesecloth into a bowl for a perfectly clear soup. For me, I'm not too worried about a few leftover flakes of katsuobushi in our soup. And there we have our homemade dashi. You could save this in the fridge for two to three days, or use it right away. Turn the heat back on, add in the stems of the komatsuna, the enoki mushrooms, and tofu. Let that simmer. One last ingredient we haven't talked about yet is the miso itself. This is white miso, it's a little smoother than red miso, usually making for a creamier soup. Either is fine though. Let's put a couple of tablespoons in a bowl. Once the ingredients have softened, ladle some dashi into the bowl and mix together until smooth. Pour that back into the soup, give it a good stir, making sure the miso is well incorporated. And finally add in the leaves of the komatsuna. Mix together and cook so the leaves are just wilted. Make sure to taste and adjust seasoning if necessary. I'm happy with this right here, so let's serve. Ladle your soup in a couple of bowls, making sure to get a good bit of everything. Let's give it a taste. Rich and flavorful with a much deeper flavor when making the dashi from scratch. Now that you're equipped with your own dashi from scratch, you can use it to make an assortment of hot pots, simmer dishes, and more, which you can check out in this playlist here. Thanks for watching.